Here's a list of the top 20 defensemen this season based on their defensive point shares. This is essentially the equivalent of a war rating in baseball, meaning that the numbers you see on this chart correspond to the number of points that these players have contributed to their team's total based on their defensive play alone. And the list includes a lot of guys you would expect to see on a list like this, like Adam Fox, Brady Shea, Adam Larson, Josh Morrissey, Drew Doughty, and Quinn Hughes. But there's one name that sits alone at the top, and by a sizable margin too, and that's Florida's Gustav Forsling. Unless you're a diehard Panthers fan, I don't think you would expect to see a guy like Forsling, who isn't a household name, at the top of a metric like that. And before you question the validity of the metric itself, it isn't perfect by any means, but there's definitely some merit behind using point shares as a measure of how valuable a player is to a team. And you can clearly see that when you look at the players who have led the league in point shares since the lockout in 0405. Every single skater who has led the league in total point shares since the lockout has won at least one major trophy. This list includes superstars of the game like Yager, Ovechkin, Daniel Sedin, Malkin, Crosby, Patrick Kane, Brent Burns, Connor McDavid, Kucherov, Pasternak, and Kale McCarr. And so far this year, Nathan McKinnon leads the league in total point shares, so let's see if he's able to keep that up the rest of the season. But my point is that there's clearly some merit to this statistic. So the fact that an under-the-radar guy like Forsling is leading the league in defensive point shares is pretty impressive. And what's even more incredible is that this guy was placed on waivers twice in his career. So he was passed over by every other team twice before the Florida Panthers took a gamble on him three years ago. So what makes this guy who has been traded twice for basically nothing and also waived twice so good? And I think this clip in overtime against the Capitals last month is the perfect example of what makes Forsling so effective. I'll let you watch the full clip first. Look out, Washington's got a three on one. Milano, stripped away by Gustav Forsling. Milano again, stripped away by Sam Bennett. The Panthers try to win it. It's Bennett, it's Forsling. Let's go home, baby! Gus wins it in overtime. This was a clear-cut three-on-one in OT with Forsling as the only man back. But as soon as Milano has to open up his hips to gather this pass, Forsling immediately recognizes that he has the option to pressure him as the puck carrier. If he doesn't pressure Milano right away, it likely becomes a clear two-on-one from the blue line in, as it would have given John Carlson the time to catch up to the play. But Forsling is able to simultaneously cut off the pass across to John Carlson and also make the defensive play on the puck carrier using his quick stick. This immediately nullifies the odd man rush for the Capitals and helps start an odd man rush for his own team. And he wastes no time to join this rush up ice, using his incredible straight line speed to take the middle lane to the net. His speed alone creates two passing lanes for Sam Bennett, who can either pass to the trailing Carter Verhage or pass to Forsling in front of the net. The pass eventually does come to Forsling, who makes no mistake to seal the win for his team. This clip encapsulates everything that makes Forsling an elite defender. He first makes a quick but correct snap decision to attack the puck carrier and close the gap between him and the puck. And then he uses his incredible skating ability to create an odd man rush for his team. And finally, he capitalizes on the offensive opportunity to finish the game. If you watch him regularly, his gap control while defending on the rush is incredibly impressive. All of these clips are from last year's playoffs against the Carolina Hurricanes, who were the second best team in the regular season last year. On each of these plays, Forsling is able to use a combination of his skating and defensive IQ to continually suffocate the opposing forwards on the rush. He never tries to overdo it or blow people up with big hits, but he's consistently able to make efficient reads on the opposing team's breakouts and is able to nullify them with simple stick checks. I think part of the reason why he's been so successful in Florida versus anywhere else is because of the style of hockey they play. Florida has a plethora of highly capable defensive forwards like Alexander Barkov and Anton Lundell, who are excellent at covering for their defensemen when needed. This gives Forsling the green light to be more aggressive on the opposing team's rush attempts because he can rely on his covering forwards. And on the off chance that the opposing team is able to enter the zone against him, he's once again able to leverage his skating ability, defensive intensity, and efficient stick checks to keep the other team off the scoreboard. Similar to his rush defense, He's extremely calm while playing D in his zone. He doesn't do a whole lot, but he always seems to make the right defensive check at the right time. 
All of these clips are still from the same Carolina series where Forsling and the Panthers eventually swept the second best team in the regular season. And in almost 120 minutes of ice time, Forsling was on the ice for zero goals against at even strength. And this was while playing top pairing minutes against the best players on the Hurricanes. Like this play where he ties up one of the strongest players in the league in Jordan Stahl to not allow him to get comfortable in front of the net. It's this all around defensive ability that has cemented Forsling as the go-to guy when Paul Maurice needs a defensive stop. And that's clear when you look at his deployment stats so far this season. He's currently second on the Panthers in average time on ice, only behind Brandon Montour. But his defensive starts percentage is the highest across the Panthers' defensive core, alongside his D partner, Aaron Ekblad. But despite starting in their own end most of the time, Forsling and Ekblad represent one of the most effective defensive pairings in the entire league. Only Ekholm and Bouchard, Heskinen and Harley, and Slavin and Burns have a higher expected goals percentage than Forsling and Ekblad. That's some elite company to be in, despite having to start most shifts from your own end. And that's a testament to Forsling's skating and underrated offensive abilities. The guy has consistently been on pace for 40 plus points in each of the past three seasons. And he's also hit double digits in goals in each of those seasons as well. So this isn't a Chris Tanev type situation where you're only getting elite defense from a guy. You're also getting above average offense as well. So this is a guy who can consistently neutralize the other team's best offensive players, give you 10 plus goals and 40 plus points, and is still just 27 years old? The Panthers have found an absolute diamond in the rough with Gus Forsling. And to top it all off, he just signed one of the better eight-year deals I've seen, putting him at just $5.75 million a year for the next eight years. For a top-pairing defenseman, you take that and you run if you're the Florida Panthers. It's hard to believe that a guy like this was considered to be worthless by multiple teams. But to be honest, it feels like Florida has constructed a bulk of its roster with cast-offs from other teams. Guys like Carter Verhage, who the Panthers signed for free as a UFA. Brandon Montour, a guy who seemed like he was on the path to becoming a journeyman in the NHL and is now a bona fide top pairing guy, was acquired for a single third round pick. Even former top draft picks like Sam Reinhart and Sam Bennett were viewed as pretty disappointing given where they were drafted. But after being moved to the Panthers, they've absolutely taken off and have become essential players for them. And at the end of the day, that's the kind of asset management you need if you're going to build a contender in today's NHL. I hope you enjoyed this in-depth video focusing on a defensive player like Forsling. I feel it's sometimes difficult to describe the impact of a defensive player by just looking at stats, so I wanted to shed more light on actual game footage as well. Let me know what you thought of this video in the comments. Thanks for watching.